Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we already discovered a little bit of Bangkok with our friends. Remember, it was their very first time in Thailand. And what's one of the must-dos when you're in Bangkok? Correct, the Grand Palace. We came very early at 8 a.m. just before the opening to beat the crowd. Now, we have already visited the Grand Palace several times before, but our most beautiful visit was in 2022. Thailand had just reopened after Covid and there were hardly any tourists. You can say we had the palace all to ourselves. If you want to see how that was, then check out the video we made two years ago. We leave the link in the description. When we arrived, we noticed the entrance to the Grand Palace had been relocated. We no longer entered along the beautiful white road with a beautiful view of the palace on the left. It made me feel a bit disoriented walking into the Grand Palace that day. The entrance fee still is 500 baht for foreigners and Thai people can enter the palace for free. I'm still blown away every time I walk around here. Everything is so beautifully maintained and so wonderfully detailed. And we were lucky. Despite there being a lot of people at the gate at 8 a.m., it was still peaceful enough to discover the palace and give our friends the chance to take lots and lots of pictures.
The Golden Stupa or the Prasri Ratana Chedi is one of the most outstanding structures within the compound. This gilded Chedi enshrines relics of the Buddha and was constructed in imitation to a large Chedi in Ayutthaya, with the explicit intention of recreating the splendor of the ancient capital and the magical powers of its landmark buildings. The golden mosaic adorning it at present was added during the reign of King Chula Longkorn. The Temple of the Emerald Buddha in the Grand Palace, Wat Prakyeo, is the main attraction. It is made from a solid piece of green jade, clothed in gold and diamonds, and they change his clothes every season. According to legends, the statue originated in India, but it was first spotted in 1434 in Chiang Rai in northern Thailand. The statue was then transferred to Chiang Mai and from there to Lao and ultimately taken by King Taksin to Tomburi in 1779, where it was placed in a shrine near Wat Arum. In 1784, the statue was moved to its current location and from the period of Rama IV, the statue was no longer allowed to leave the temple for processions in order not to damage it.
On the grounds of the Grand Palace, you will also find the Queen City Kit Museum of Textiles. An admission to this museum is included in the Grand Palace entry fee. In 2003, Her Majesty Queen Sirikit requested permission to use a then vacant building on the ground of the Grand Palace to house a new museum of textiles. The museum embodies Her Majesty's efforts to assure the preservation of Thailand's textile arts for future generations. It is really worth a visit because here you'll find the most beautiful dresses from Queen Sirikit's wardrobe over the years. Once you have visited the Grand Palace, you should of course also visit the nearby Royal Temple Complex of Wat Po. This temple is also known as the Temple of the Reclining Buddha. In 2022, we were here all alone. Alone. The Buddha is 46 meters long and 15 meters high. It is one of the largest Buddha statues in Thailand. The soles of the feet of the Buddha are 3 meters high, 4.5 meters long and inlaid with mother of pearl. The temple complex also houses a school of Thai medicine and is considered to be the birthplace of traditional Thai massage, which is, by the way, still taught and practiced at the temple. The entrance fee to Wat Po is 200 baht. Make sure you visit the entire temple complex and not just the temple of the reclining Buddha. It is really worth it. Thank you for joining us to the Grand Palace in Wat Po. If you want to support us, just leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, take care and see you in the next one.